Something I want to show you next are the variables. So if we come over here to the skin editor and go over to CSS, you have these variables. Now, we're going to look at different ways to use variables, but one of the things that I think is really important is to use existing is to use existing variables in your code. So, for example, you know, in that footer, we used that color one so that it would be the, it would take that color with the color changed. We also did the same thing with, with this media query, right? We used the total page width as our, as our trigger for our media query. And then, you know, again, chose colors that were part of the variables. This means that when somebody changes that variable value, it also changes here in your code. That's the real power of the variables. Well, so that's one way to use existing variables here. And although I have not done it yet, another cheat sheet that will be coming soon is one that maps, that shows you which variables are mapped to which CSS elements and what they do. Okay, that's coming in the near future. So anyway, if we go back over here to our CSS editor, then you can see Chris makes a very extensive use of variables in his code, right? Just tons and tons of variables here in his code. Now we can create a variable. And, you know, we could, we could create a variable that was, you know, I don't know, P, I'm not going to call it P, what, what is it? I'm going to call it padding. I'm going to call it zero padding margin. Okay, and then I'm going to call it, you know, I don't think I can start this with a, well, let's just try it. No, I don't think I can. I can't start a class reference with a zero. So, well, let's just try it. So we'll say zero PM as our reference. And then I'm just going to type in padding colon zero px margin whoops and save that variable so now I've got my zero pm and See, we'll save that CSS and then come back over to our custom CSS. And I could then say, for example, for my header, right? I've got this header border I want to remove. Well, I could also do that. Whoops, pardon me. I could also do this, zero padding margin. Right. If I put that there, save custom CSS, notice that it is showing it as black because at the moment it does not realize that it has a, the semicolon inside of it. If I put the semicolon here, oh, oh it's still showing it as black. Well, let's see what happens. I'm not quite sure why that's showing as black there. But anyway, if we save our custom CSS, come back over and refresh it, and then just look at the element, look at our header, All right? We've got header padding zero, margin zero, and and if we look at that in its context. We, oh, this is something I already put in there. But if we look at our custom CSS, here is our custom CSS. It says header, border, none, padding, zero, margin, zero, right? So it wrote that CSS correctly. Note the absence of the tab there. That's kind of interesting. 
But in any case, it took that variable and it placed it in there and the zero clearly worked. Now, I guess that's probably black because it's replacing the entire it's replacing the entire combination of property and value. In fact, it's multiple properties and values. So it's suggesting that this is an error, but that's just the way, from its standpoint, this is an error. And you could probably make the error go away by saying padding like that. No, you can't. Isn't that interesting? It must be it must be fully interpreting the value of this. Did not did not look at that last time. But in any case, this works just fine. Okay. You can also use variables in this value. So, for example, if we come back over to our come back over to our editor CSS and open up that variable, we can also say background color colon, and then we could pick a color. Like say dollar sign, what was that? That was color one, wasn't it? C O L O R one. Okay, we could use the variable in here. I wonder what would happen if I tabbed right now. Probably nothing. Yeah. Save that. Save the CSS. Come back over and refresh it. And now we've got that background color in here, and you can see it placed the background color in, right? It took the value of that variable and it inserted it. So you can nest variables inside of variables. That was my, that's the point of that. You can also actually, you could theoretically take an entire block of text and paste it as a variable. So, for example, if we go back to our custom CSS, you know, we could take this. In fact, we could take this. Save it. Come back over to our editor. CSS, create a variable, call it background or body background, CK, and then paste that entire thing. We're talking about the entire, including the the including the comment, hit save, and then save our CSS, come back over to a custom CSS, and then place our body background in there, save the custom CSS, refresh it. And then if we come up and look at our body, we've got that back in here, right? There is our comment and there is the code. So you can see this does work fairly well for just about anything. And you'll probably find lots of ways to use it. Okay, those are variables. Somebody asks, won't the variables slow down the site? No, because the variables are processed when you save the custom CSS. They are not processed 
every time a page loads. They are only processed when the CSS page is generated. And the CSS page is generated just when you when you hit save here. So no, it's not going to slow the site down. It's going to it's a one it's an operation that only happens when you hit save. 